Hi, Carl here for Provey TV, and today I'm going to look at these lovely three lenses and try and help you choose which one is best for you and for your work. Up until very recently, an all-purpose zoom lens designed for video, but at an affordable price point, was something that was very, very hard to find. These three lenses range from 2,500 to 4,000 pounds, which yes, is a lot of money. But when you consider that up until very recently, if you wanted to spend that kind of money, video specific lenses for large sensors just didn't really exist. You had to either use stills lenses at a lower cost, or you'd be looking at spending up to 10 grand or above on cinema zooms. This is effectively a whole new category of lenses, which is very exciting. So, what are these lenses exactly in front of me? Well, first up is what I call the ENG, or the convenience option. This is the Sony 18 to 110 mm f4 lens, which is the lens that Sony have designed to be paired with the new FS7 Mark II behind me. I have a whole video on this lens specifically, which I'll link to below if you want more detail. But a long story short, it is a fantastic choice for Sony users. It doesn't achieve the optical quality of these two, but it gets close and it can actually compensate for some of those known issues electronically within the body. For example, it's not a parfocal lens by design, which means when you zoom in or out, you'll lose focus slightly. But it has a neat trick up its sleeve and it knows how much it goes out of focus and it compensates for that as much as possible by electronically adjusting the focus within the lens while you zoom. This makes it effectively parfocal, and it does seem to work pretty well, at least to my eyes. You also get image stabilization, full servo zoom, which can be controlled on the Sony hand grip, or it can both zoom and focus completely manually if you prefer. Now, on the other end, this is a fully manual cinema lens from Fujinon. This is the new 18 to 55 millimeter T2.9. This is a brand new lens and has got a lot of people very excited as it really does have all the benefits of the larger, much more expensive cinema zooms, but in a small, light and affordable lens. This is completely parfocal. It's a constant two, um, T2.9 and it has next to no breathing at all when you focus. Plus it actually weighs just under a kilo, which for a lens of this quality is remarkably light. In fact, the only real drawback here, to be honest, is that it's E-mount only. So you are stuck in the Sony ecosystem. Yes, that's also the case for the Sony lens, but with cinema lenses like this, people are used to being able to invest in them and then use them on whichever cameras they like for each job. So if you've got a job you want to use your FS7 on, great. But if you want to use a C300 for the next job or an Alexa, whatever you want to use, you can take your glass with you. So it's a shame that this is only E-mount, but that's of course the only way that they've been able to get down the size, weight and cost down to this level. So I think it's a fair trade personally. It's a beautiful lens and perhaps my favourite of this bunch to use. And then we have the middle ground. This is the Canon 18 to 80 mm T4.4, which I also have a separate video on. And as always, the link to that is in the description below. Now, the reason I call this the middle ground here is that Canon have managed to make a lens with the cinema quality of their larger lenses, their full cinema lineup. It's fully parfocal and a nice manual control, but with the ENG features for convenience when shooting. You get a full servo zoom and fast autofocus, especially when it's used with Canon's cameras. But here with the FS7 and a Metabones adapter to mount it, the autofocus doesn't actually work, unfortunately. You do get the servo zoom though, and the image stabilization with the FS7. So it's definitely a more convenient option for run and gun filmmaking than a fully manual lens like the Fujinon is. So let's have a look at some footage. I took all of these three lenses and the FS7 II to the woods with my friend Dan for a little dog walk. This is a completely unscientific comparison. I tried to pull off the same shot with each lens, just aiming to make it look as good as I could with each lens, rather than matching the aperture, focal length and exposure exactly. For example, in this pull focus shot, I wanted to see how much breathing was noticeable with each lens when you were actually doing real world filming. But I zoomed into the max with each lens, like I would do if I was using each lens out there on the job. The 
Sony lens was the only one I noticed the breathing on here, which was expected to be honest. And then I did a portrait shot of Dan to see how the bokeh looked and how the lenses handled a face. All lenses were wide open and around the 50 mm mark. Personally, my favourite here is the Fujinon. The background blur just seems a lot smoother and more appealing to me, probably due to the faster aperture. Interesting side note here, this is when I really noticed the benefits of having the variable ND on the FS7 II. It meant I could get exactly the same exposure whether I was at T4.4 or if I was at T2.9, which was really useful. Then I spent a while looking at the focus breathing with each lens just simply adjusting the focus in and out to see if the edges of the image zoomed at all. Again, I think the Fuji lens was the clear winner here, with no breathing either when wide open or at telephoto. The Sony, interestingly, didn't have that much either, but there was definitely some if you look closely. The Canon had definite breathing at the wide end, but none at all when it was zoomed in. Then I did some zoom tests. This was to see if there was any light fall off when zooming, which luckily I didn't notice on any of the lenses. This also gave us a look at just how par focal they are in a real world use case. And they all held up pretty well there as well. I think you can have confidence in your focus when zooming with all of these lenses. So it's clear all three lenses are solid choices. They all have their clear strengths and weaknesses. For me, the decision comes down to the kind of work that you do at the end of the day. If you need the servo zoom and the image stabilization, you unfortunately have to rule out the Fuji, I think. So for the FS5 and the FS7 behind me, the Sony is a better choice as you get more range and autofocus if you need it in my opinion. But if you want the flexibility of using your lens on other cameras, the Canon is the only one here that will actually work. Both the Sony and the Fuji are E-mount only lenses. In terms of optical quality, let me know your opinions in the comment section, but to me, the Fujinon 18 to 55 mm stands out as the nicest images of the bunch. I also personally find it the nicest to use. I've always preferred fully manual lenses, so that's probably why, but the focus is very smooth and just the right amount of rotation in order to get smooth, easy and accurate focus pulls. It also feels very balanced and comfortable on both the FS5 and the FS7, whereas the Sony lens, to be honest, feels a little large. The Canon does feel nice, but I think the Fuji is a slightly more comfortable pairing, personally. So, I hope that was helpful and helped you decide. Let me know in the comments section which lens you think you would choose if you were making the decision. Plus, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.